My name is Chris Beck. I live in Dalton, Georgia. Even from an early age, now my mom will tell you that I've been an artist my entire life. I don't know that that's necessarily true, but what I will say is I always had the desire to create. There was always something kind of inside that I felt like I needed to be doing something, something creative. I remember being a being a boy and, and standing up on, a, on the back of a stool watching my dad as he's sanding a piece of wood or pulling something down the drill press. He never, son, you don't, you don't need to be in here, dad's working, get out of here, go away. I and mean, he always let me be a part of whatever he was doing. Dad's a doctor. My mom opened an interior design firm in Troy, did interior decorating and design. My dad also was a knife maker back in the 70s and 80s, was making and producing really beautiful knives and graced the cover of Blade magazine. I mean, he was kind of a legit dude. Even though he was delivering babies and saving lives on a daily basis, he still had this kind of creative, artistic niche. I think when you're a kid and you're exposed to art, so to speak, or art or artistic medium, painting and, and drawing and, and so on, that's basically what you got. You got magic markers, you got crayons, pencil. Rarely are you gonna get into paints or welding. That's just not something that you're gonna be exposed to as a kid. So as a kid, and even through junior high and high school, I tried painting and I tried carving wood and like my dad making furniture or knife making. I mean, I tried a lot of different things. Nothing fit. It didn't feel right. It wasn't that intuitive. Hey, this is working. This is good. For me, it was disappointing because I wanted to do some, something and I knew that I needed to be doing something, but the things that I was doing weren't clicking. And I think that both my mom and my dad, whether it was taught to me or not, what I learned was aesthetics and spatial design. This needs to be here, that needs to be there. Too much color here, not enough color there. Way too heavy over here, not heavy enough. Way too much lighter, whatever. Those, those things are, are real. I feel like I picked that up, so to speak. More learning by watching rather than studying in a book. My artwork is primarily reclaimed or found objects, mostly metal. It's mostly rusty and it's different, I think is probably the word that I'll use. It's unique. I don't know if anybody that's doing what I'm doing in metal. The majority of what I do is, is kind of uh, clothing themed, dresses and pants and sport coats and shoes and bow ties, things like that. Most of what I use is barn roofing. I say barn roofing, but a chicken coop roof. It's just old rusty, old rusty galvanized roofing. I take a, a sheet of steel, I beat it up, cut it up, hem it, if you, you say that, and then weld it back together. And what you have is a dress or a sport coat or something, you know. But it's, it's a simple process. It's just not simple to do. I enjoy the process of making and I try to make what I see. I find myself working at the mercy of what the metal's gonna do rather than what I want it to do. But the cool thing is I have an image in my brain now of what I want and so that's the direction that now I have to go. More often than not, what I end up with is way cooler, tangibly, in reality. It's a lot cooler than what I envisioned through the process, you know. What I wanted to end up in the back of my mind and what I have are more or less the same. But the real thing is so much cooler than what I thought it was gonna be only because the metal kind of goes its own direction and does its own thing. When, when that happens, you get inconsistencies or the non-symmetrical shapes or what makes the dress or the jeans, or the coat or whatever. That's what makes it look real. I mean, that's what gives, there's something very realistic and very natural and organic about having it just be a little off. And that to me is really cool. And to me, that is all the Lord. So 2003, 2004, I got introduced to a group of artists from, from Central Alabama who did not go to school for art. So I met this, met this guy, his name is Charlie Lucas. So Charlie Lucas, is, he's kind of a big deal. He's kind of a famous dude and he's been all over the world and he's you know exhibited in Paris and he's, he's a legit dude. I've got a book on my coffee table just about him, like the whole book is just about him. Grew up in Central Alabama, lived on a junkyard and created these beautiful, mind-blowing, very subversive, raw and fabulous sculptures out of rusty metal. And I thought, well, I don't, I didn't think anything. My, my mind got blown. Right around that time that I was introduced to this, this guy's work and others who were doing things like him, it really, it lit a fire, man. I was like, that's what I need to be doing. 
not going to Hobby Lobby and buying a canvas and getting some paints off the shelf and going and painting a painting. I can take found objects, that little piece of wood or that or that. You know, it just changed my perspective. In August of 2006, I actually met Charlie Lucas. I went up to him and I shook his hand and through, through this conversation, he says to me, he says, um, so what do you do? He wasn't asking what I did for a living. That's not what he was asking. What he was asking was, clearly there's something going on inside you. What, what do you do? And my response was nothing. That was the answer that I had for him. I'm not doing anything. Haunted is the word that I would use. It haunted me, the thing that he, that his, his response to me still, it, it was awesome because it lit a fire. But in the moment, it shook me. He said, well, you should. And here's this legend, Charlie Lucas. And what's cool is he saw something in me that I did not see. For him to see inside my soul and say, there's something there, it needs to come out and you're not doing it and you need to. That's what I heard. There's something in there. Get it out. Shame on you for not already. That's not what he said. He was as genteel and kind as he could be because that's his character. He is just a very humble and, uh, and gracious man. But what he said was, get it out because we need to see it. That's what I heard. And it rocked me, man. I left demolished and encouraged. You know, I, I left just, man, humiliated, man. Here's Charlie Lucas. And my response to him was, man, I got nothing. But his response to me was, yes, you do. You just got to get it out. And it, it changed my life. That was August of 2006. Sorry, I just got emotional, man, but it was awesome. It changed my life. Since meeting him in August through that January, I literally created a, a junkyard in my backyard. We were living in Atlanta. Every scrap piece of metal that I found, I brought home. And so I was like, okay, well, well now I, I need a welder. So if I'm gonna start doing, I need to get a welder so I can start doing. It was New Year's Day. I met this old farmer at his farm. He was like, well, what are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna make art. You gonna do what? <laughs> Awesome. Those first couple of months, I, I just, I just melted metal, and it was pure testosterone, and it was awesome, and I loved it. And Susan's like, "Baby, I love you, but if you're gonna spend your time doing something, do something." I did. I started putting things together. I think that's where a lot of my mom's gifting came in. You know, and I take this piece because the colors are good, and this piece because the overall shape is good, and I'm putting things together and kind of assemblage type things. And when I first started welding, I was doing birds and crosses and flowers and hearts and. I think very typical metal sculpture things. You know, found this iron board laying there, and I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? I gotta get it out of here. I need to get it out of here because it's occupying space. And I thought it would be kind of cool if there was a shirt on that ironing board, you know, like it was being ironed. That's where that initial idea came from. It wasn't like I thought of it all on my own. It's kind of like a bird doesn't fit, a cross doesn't fit. And I didn't want to cut it up because it, you cut it, what are you gonna do with a bunch of cut up pieces? I needed to use the ironing board. From that point, the, the job was to improve the aesthetics, to make the look look real. And once you work with the material long enough, you get a little more familiar with it and you kind of understand it won't fold this way, it will fold that way. You kind of learn your boundary and what you can accomplish and what you can't. But that still didn't phase me from stretching the limit. I wanted to do this because that's what a real shirt would do. Let me see if I can do that. The inability to do that with, with the finished product is just cool because I'm, I'm trying to do this and it just won't do, but it actually looks more real like it is right now. So I just, I'm just gonna stop because that's kind of exactly what I want. Do I travel for work? Yes, and I hate it. Can I say that? It's true, I hate it. I have two kids and they're awesome. I have a beautiful wife and she's awesome and I have the coolest job on the face of the planet. I get to make pretty and do pretty every day. That's the coolest job on the face of the planet, man. But in order to get it out to people, I mean, I know the web is, you know, it can reach millions of people, but if people don't know to look for it, who knows about metal dresses? I have chosen to go and to put it in different markets and different states and, and travel and get it out there. If I'm showing, I can't be visiting with my kids, you know, and I gotta go to work. It's become more of a job. <laughs> My wife is an assistant district attorney and she works at the courthouse. It's an amazing supernatural ability to disconnect from work and come home and be an amazing wife and be an amazing mom and be fully invested in joy and happiness with your kids and not bring any of that stuff home to me is just remarkable. And on top of that, she's really pretty. She loves me and she supports me and she encourages me and she allows me to be the man that God called me to be. I have two kids. My daughter just turned four about a month ago, and her name is Macy, 
and she's beautiful and has the prettiest brown eyes I've ever seen and this crazy just ringlet curly hair it's awesome I mean it's just fabulous and she's a total girl total girl painted fingernails and painted toenails she wants pink exploded on everything so whatever I'm doing She's right there with me, and she's a total girl, but all about some dad. And my son, his name is Jasper. He is, <laughs> he really, he might be the cutest thing ever. He loves his mom. Ooh, mom, ooh, we loves his mama. And he kind of grunts like, oh, oh, oh. when he sees his mom, it's really, really cute. I mean, if I'm holding him, he's cool. I mean, he doesn't, I mean, he, he, he digs some dad, but man, if he sees his mom, he loves his mom. Saturday's Alabama day. And Jasper's cool because he'll just sit on your lap and watch football. And it's just, it's kind of awesome. How does my faith influence my work? Or I would be nothing, we would be nothing without God the Father and without the sacrifice of Christ the Son. Nothing. I don't always acknowledge that when I'm working. I, I tend to get ego and, you know, I get a little Chris Bay. Look what I did. That's awesome. I do that. And I think that's natural. And I don't want to, oh, we're not going to start a new church on it. God's not going to kick me out of heaven. Because I do you know, I, I do occasionally take a little credit. Look what I made. But the truth is, I did make it. It was my hands. It was my, my mind. But I didn't think about that idea all on my own. And I sure didn't give myself the ability to do it. And, and that's where the difference is. I, I am aware of where my talent comes from. And it is talent. And I don't say that arrogantly. There is genuine skill in what I do. It doesn't just happen. You can give anybody some hand tools, a hammer and a, a rubber mallet and a pair of pliers and a welder and a sheet of steel and say, go. But I don't think everybody's gonna be able to produce what I produce. What's cool for me in, in my, my nine to five or my, 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 my day to day and my daily walk really jive and sync because I feel like I'm working right there with Christ, man. I feel like God's like, hey, do this. And I'm like, hey, okay, I could do that. And that's really cool. And I don't think that's normal. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, as an artist and as, as, as a child of God, maybe everybody experiences that on a daily basis. I don't know. But for me, it's special. There's something cool about knowing God put this here and I have to do it. And the only way for me to properly honor the Lord, A, is to do it and B, do it like I see it.